Hello! Welcome to another episode on the graphic novel and the process in how I make this graphic novel. So, in the previous video we stopped with what I now call the first draft stage. That meant that I have completed the drawings, I have scanned in the drawings and I have clean them up. I Because my scanner can only scan A4 and my original drawings were A3 size, I had to split them. So I had to combine them again in Photoshop to a single page and then resize it to an A4 size. And then I took those scanned images into InDesign I decided to use InDesign as the layout program because of various reasons that I believe that I revealed in that episode, which included just that it aids in the workflow. It allowed me to go back and forth in if I want to change some of the text. I have used Comic Life before, but the Comic Life, you can only save the pages as JPEGs. So it doesn't allow you to go back so easily and change or make, make small textual changes. So that's basically where I ended. But then I read the first draft, the, then I read the first draft in its entirety. And I looked at the pages as a visual medium in connection with the text, because the text also have typographical value. And I felt that it still needed some tonal value. It still did needed some quote unquote color. And some of the commentary I received last year at the workshop was, why don't you give it some color digitally? But I was quite against going full out color. And there are many reasons for it. Color is very powerful on its own. But I also wanted, for the sake of the story, I wanted to keep the gray. I wanted to keep the black and white. Because the story is about two people on opposite sides of apartheid. And apartheid was a political system of se segregation that really focused on the color of people's skin. And the words of black versus white really stood out during apartheid. And I wanted to, through a visual medium, I wanted to visually show that. So although both characters stand on opposing sides of that mirror, of, and in between them is this pool, is this dam called apartheid, um, there are still echoes of of that in there. And I also wanted to have that voice in a visual way. So my grandmother's voice, I used graphite because the graphite as a medium, it's a very soft medium and it does allow for a tonal value, but because it's so soft, it reflected to me that rosy colored viewpoint that she has and that idealism that she has. And it felt that the other narrator, which became me, <laughs> um, that character was much more questioning, much more um, doubtful in many ways. And I wanted it to reflect. But I, as I said, I, I had a a reason for keeping the two mediums separate. But at the same time, I when I started to scan in the graphite, I saw that a lot of the detail of the graphite got lost. And I realized just from a practical standpoint why the graphite isn't as effective because it doesn't reproduce. And whenever you make a graphic novel, whenever you make a comic, the medium itself, there are reasons why certain techniques are preferred just because it's always an interpreted medium in terms of printing or screen. It's not going to be viewed in the original material that you drew it on or in or with. So it's not going to be viewed 
from other people, read by other people, by viewers, the recipients, they won't see it as graphite drawings. They will see it as a printed product. So for the last chapter, because of the physical constraints I experienced with the graphite, I felt the graphite alone as a medium got too much compromised when it got scanned. I also thought, you know, from a visually, but also in terms of the storyline, I do want these two voices to reach closer and closer to each other. And I deemed the fact to use ink in the last chapter, although it's the voice of Verna and not my voice, but for them to then, for both narrators to use the same medium, it symbolically visually shows that these two voices start to echo each other in some way. And I am a mimesis of her in some way, although I don't want to maybe acknowledge it. But um, I also, as I said, I, I looked at these graphite drawings, which really surprised me and became very beautiful for me. And I thought, okay, the graphite on its own as, as pages do not stand out strongly enough and a lot of the white of the page begins to dominate these pages. Let me adopt some of the advice that I have been given last year of adding color, quote unquote, but not the color that they had in mind, which was the rainbow color or the color wheel, but adding typographical color or tonal value. So I began from January to add tonal value, a set of grays to the pages. And this color I added Dig digitally in Photoshop. I also decided I'm not going to attempt to make it look like a painting. I am going to limit my gray values to 10% gray, 30% gray, 50%, 70%, and 90% gray. I still wanted the graphite pages themselves to never really reach black, pure black. I wanted it to retain that very soft approach and a lighter touch so that it really does contrast well with the other ink pages. And at that stage, I thought that the ink pages were going to remain only ink uh, with no digital coloring added. And I began to, as I said, I used Photoshop. I added another layer on top of the graphite drawing, the scan, and then I would paint, block out areas of that gray and or a specific tonal value of the gray. And then I would use the multiply function to allow some of the mark making of the bottom to come through. So going digital or using digital as a third medium allowed me even more variety of mark making. And that really surprised me because initially I didn't want to go, I didn't want to use digital um, coloring. Um, initially, I thought I'm going to make everything by hand. But I really, really enjoyed the depth of color, typographical color or tonal value that I received and the pleasure it gave me in using digital color, so to speak. It also surprised me because it allowed even more variety of mark making. So I had the original mark making of the graphite and the texture that provided as it um, brushed over or drew as I drew with it over the surface of the paper. But it also, um, I also had texture in terms of the variety of digital brushes that I could use. So I could use charcoal brushes for some of the trees and some of the soil or the ground. I could use gradient fills for some of the backgrounds that were too white and overpowering. And suddenly adding that tonal value to that page just changes 
the atmosphere of the page completely. And I also added some watercolor brushes for sort of clouds. So sometimes it could really give that soft feel that I loved. And I was completely surprised by the depth of mark making, the variety that I got, that if I hadn't used it and I used only graphite, I really miss, would have missed out on. I really was pleased with that combination of the graphite and the digital brush uh, that I believe that without the graphite the digital brush can easily look flat it lacks a kind of depth so working in this layer and working in one medium scanning it in and then working on top of that scan to add more tonal value. I believe that whole process itself was necessary to create the kind of mark making and tonal value that I really achieved in the end and that I really was looking for all this time. So just working in graphite would not have been sufficient for me and just working in graphite Oh, sorry, and just working digitally would also not have been satisfactory. I realized I, I needed that combination of the two. I also made a wonderful discovery with the scan and I started to realize that on some of the pages of the scan, the scanner itself adds a type of mechanical mark making that I did not anticipate. The scan itself interprets the drawing in a visual as visual data and sometimes you can see that mechanical glitch on the page as it sometimes also because of the split and I had to paste them together in Photoshop but also sometimes the scan itself sometimes it would pixelate a certain line which was very softened or vice versa sometimes it was a very hard line which had a very hard edge but the scan kind of blurred it a little bit and that was as I said a very surprising discovery for me that this machine also became a trans it was the drawing got transferred from from drawing to scan and that transfer added a sense of print the same way that when you make any kind of print an etch or a lino you work on the plate and the printing process creates an added interpretation from because of that transfer process so that for me was very very interesting another thing as I am working on these pages, I started to think about the concept of layers and working physically in layers in Photoshop. So as I've mentioned, I have the scan and that scan is one layer and then I create another layer with a panel on top of it, but sometimes I would have a third or a fourth or a fifth layer. Sometimes I worked in creating mosques, but this document which started out as one layer became a multi-layer document, a multi-layer drawing and it started to make me think of multiple layers of meaning, multiple layers of interpretation and how that applies so beautifully to the physical characteristics of the medium. Another thing I observed, which was for me surprising and interesting, was also why am I so attached to this concept of just working in tonal grays? Why do I not want to go and explore the whole color wheel? And I initially could not explain why I was attached to this idea but as I started to paint digital digitally and work and work and rework this I started to realize but there's a deep-seated meaning to me for using tonal value of gray and then your black and white on the outer ranges and gray consists of mixing black and white Gray is literally in between and I don't know if my actual story comes through that I am 
on this quest of finding meaning. I'm, I'm definitely searching for it. I'm searching for answers. But I was hoping that it would come through visually that I am looking for the in-between. I'm looking for the gray areas. I understand when I read historical books, the black and white areas. But what, what, is it, what was it like for ordinary people to live in that time? And did they think about it the way that we think, that we perceive they would have or did think about it? Were they as conscious, consciously aware of it? Um, or was it just that they really lived in their own small environment in their world and it wasn't necessarily something that they were aware of um, I didn't know so I was I was actually looking as I said I was looking for the gray areas I was looking for what was in between what what, what, what is in between the official pages what was it like to live like that and I think that is why I I'm so drawn to the gray. For me also, as I mentioned, color itself is very powerful. And because it's so powerful, it can also be distracting. And that's another reason why I think it best to have not used color and remained in tonal value, because then you just look at the color bits, the color parts, so to speak. This is another observation that I realized actually one night as I was brushing my teeth. And that was in terms of working in layers, as I worked in layers in Photoshop, that that was actually a reflection of the process in the small, because I also had layers of working in the bigger process, so to speak. So initially I began with okay, I really want to tell my grandmother's story. And I began with this interview with this open-ended view um, with really no clue where it was going to go. And then I allowed her free, freely to tell her story. But then from the transcripts, I tried to extract a story. I wanted to construct. I wanted to see how can I construct story from this that would be meaningful and that would also be possible to do. That won't be a story of a thousand pages. And then I began to write the script. So th at that stage, so that was maybe your second layer, I focused a lot on the words and I kept on telling to myself, don't think about how you're going to draw it, because then you might feel intimidated, especially if it's something that you've never drawn before. I am prone to prefer to draw figures, and the idea of drawing a comic with backgrounds, especially mechanical things like the trains and the cars, that was not my forte of interest. If I had to think at that stage of what I would like to draw or what I think I can draw the best, then that, that would have influenced the story. And I didn't want it to do that. I wanted to just focus on what kind of story do, you want, do I want to tell by using the transcript as much as possible and constructing a narrative from that or extracting. I, I don't want to say construct. I prefer to use extract because I really had her transcript as a limitation, so to speak. I couldn't add things to her life that wasn't there. So that was also another layer of looking at it. And then I have the next layer. So once I've mulled over the words, I began to create drawings. And when, once I was at the tangible drawing pages stage, that was the ink or the graphite pages, I only focused on the imagery. And I wondered if other people, other author, comic artists also had the same process of just working sort of compartmentally. And it's only at the stage, at the last stage, 
when you reach your first first draft stage that you begin to combine all these layers all these elements together to create this cohesive whole and it was only once i reached the first draft stage where i added the text and the image on one page that i could really see the story come together and find new meaning in it so there was also a sense of building up layers one after the other and then of course this theme of layers seemed to have followed me because there's also a sense of layers in terms of voices there are the two voices so it's my voice it's the the one narrator and then the other main narrator is Verna so I have these two voices and also there is actually a third voice involved in it as well because I've included some recipe pages and although it seems like an impartial voice, it is a voice and it is a voice that adds value to the story and changes some of the ideas and the understandings of what is being told by another narrator. So I've got layers of narrators as well and I found that quite fascinating to to say the least in terms of the process and how you're constructing a graphic novel. That's something that I wouldn't have anticipated, I wouldn't have known unless I made a graphic novel myself and I've always wanted to do this but I've always been so scared in how do you bring a story together so I'm really pleased that I have finally this opportunity I feel very privileged that I have this opportunity to bring all of that together as I've mentioned before I thought I was only going to add tonal value to the graphite pages at that stage I believed that the pen and ink pages had enough tonal value <laughs> but surprise surprise when I finished the fourth chapter and I thought now it's done and dusted I really looked at chapter five and I thought about as I've mentioned before the symbolism of everything visually coming together the stories intertwining I thought mm, you know visually it might look good with some tonal value and it will fit in with the symbolism and I thought let's just try one page and see how that's gonna work <laughs> and it looked great I really loved that tonal value that was added to the pen pages so where I am at right now is I'm busy with chapter five and I'm adding tonal value to those ink pages I cannot say whether or not I'm now going to actually add some tonal value to all my pages and whether I'm going to stop after the chapter 5 pages. I will have to see how it evolves. I will have to trust the process that when I get there I will test it out and I will have enough knowledge to know what to do next. Thank you so much for being with me and watching this video, this process video. I um, hope to share some work very, very soon.